Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex, gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 29th of July, how the year has flown. I uh, hope you all had a great trading week, it's definitely been a topsy-turvy trading week and we'll get into that as well, but um, before we do, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video uh, if you find my content of use every uh, Sunday. So getting into uh, some trade updates, some new trades as well before we get into the uh, week ahead, I guess, and the uh, the fundamental side of things. And uh, uh, a trade update on the Euro Aussie. So Euro Aussie pretty much on the, uh, I think it was the Monday. Uh, yeah, it was the Monday. Uh, pretty much just blew through my positions, right? Um, I entered into a uh, supply zone really kind of based on uh, the euro uh, being the weaker out of the two and the Australian dollar um, holding rates or look, even looking to high rates depending on what happens with uh, inflation. Now, the uh, reason why this happened is more to do with um, risk sentiment that we'll get into a bit later. Um, there was some uh, some yen um, unwinding, I guess, and, and a short squeeze and um, uh, on 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 the yen, which uh, commodity currencies uh, like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar were mainly affected. The Canadian dollar not so much, although they did cut rates this week. But um, yeah, this trade pretty much uh, on the Monday just you know cut through like a hot knife through butter but i haven't re-entered yet i'm looking to re-enter uh if there's an entry somewhere around here this area here i can't see this this move being sustainable can't be and see really the euro being uh that strong for that long and plus the euro has got some uh some important data this week to come out so uh i'm still fundamentally uh short on this currency pair just looking for a pair and really um, it's just really about understanding that, um, of course, A, not every level is going to work because if it did, we'd be trillionaires and uh, B, you know, you accept the loss, move on. As long as the uh, the setup was uh, part of the plan, um, then you just take, you know, the next trade, right? No one knows where price is going to turn around because if they did, then, um, you know, you'd pretty much bet everything you had on that one trade if you knew it was going to turn around, right? If you know the sun's going to come up. In the morning, uh, you'd place that bet, right? So, because um, it's a high, very high probability bet, but no one knows, so we manage our risk. And, um, you know, there was no entries really uh, that I could see even heading up into this area here, the entries that I use anyway. So it is what it is, uh, wait for the next trade. And this week has been definitely a, a drawdown week. So uh, had a couple of losses and uh, a win um uh, on the uh, FTSE 100 so this was a trade that um we had been waiting for for quite a long time matter of fact uh, probably since um around the beginning of the month and this was a little bit of a different trade in terms of what I kind of talk about it's more of a stop hunt trade and um getting into really the uh, the stop hunt side of things um uh, I posted this on Friday the 5th of July uh, I said everyone in the uh, in our private Discord mentoring group, I said everyone, I think this is a really nice potential stop hunt setup on the FTSE 100. The UK under labour is seen as positive uh, for the UK economy, investment due to government stability and with rate cuts on the horizon, any pullbacks should be nice buying opportunities. So this was really the setup I was looking at um, uh, as a stop hunt and uh, the more times the level is touched, this was actually a, a nice demand zone, but the more times the level is touched, the more obvious the trade kind of becomes and it, you know, typically turns into or can turn into, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say typically because it depends on what side of the uh, fundamentals that you are on and risk sentiment, but um, ultimately this was the plan, right? So this was, you know, we saw the trade set up way ahead of time and um, of course it played out this time, right? So this was the trade level had been touched several times and then uh, went down to like a lower time frame the four hour this was my entry right here um stopped just below the low and um the i only got triggered into really one uh position unfortunately uh and i ended up taking profit uh, on this i was meant to actually um 
uh, take partial profits, but it kind of surprised me the speed at which the move uh, moved to the upside. And by the time I considered um, taking just partial profits, I had actually hit my first profit target on a full profit. So, um, so I didn't manage to get to even adjust uh, the uh, the profit target, and the, you know prices kind of went on without me. And um, yeah, so didn't get filled into other positions either, you know, any of the second or third positions on a pullback. But ultimately, uh, that was a really nice uh, trade. And um, silver uh, versus the euro managed to re-enter again, again, really based on a, on a stop hunt um, uh, type trade and managed to get in at this uh, at this um, this level here this 2682 uh, so this is uh, again silver versus the euro now um again exactly the same uh, type of setup where you can see the stop hunt below and then looking for uh, a move to the upside now strangely um the uh, this uh, silver ended up um uh, uh, you know, uh, depreciating, devaluing overnight, right? So started at kind of like two in the morning and then went to the downside. Now, um, in the risk-off environment, you would expect silver to at least move to the upside. Plus as well, we had some, um, you know, some, uh, I guess, not so good news for uh, manufacturing PMIs for the euro. So, um, you know, we would have thought that uh, everything was looking right for the trade, but ultimately, prices moved to the downside, right? The, the, the market just didn't see this as a bargain price and uh, went to the downside. So ended up losing uh, those trades as well. Now, again, um, for me, nothing's changed fundamentally with the euro. I still think it's a bit more of a sell uh, uh, fundamentally. And silver is, is a buy as we head into the elections, you know, the precious metals. So I'll be looking for a buy trade if I can see an entry and get an entry somewhere around here. So the upside potential, yep, might lose a few trades. But ultimately, if the fund fundamentals haven't changed it just means that you can buy for a cheaper price and when it does turn around the upside potential is a lot more so i'll be looking for definitely multiple uh, uh risk rewards of course on my positions hopefully i can get into a few positions and then uh you know basically just make back the uh, the losses and get some more and then finally on the euro new zealand um i'm in this trade uh to the downside think the New Zealand has had a bit of a, a bad run recently. I mean, that is obviously, I say obviously, but it is kind of due to um, the market kind of pricing in earlier rate cuts because um, uh, the uh, Central Bank, Reserve Bank of New Zealand were a bit dovish. And um, uh, so the, the markets basically come out and uh, rather than pricing in uh, rate cuts for 2025 they've now the banks and then you know the uh, the market is kind of pricing them in uh, to be around say November potentially October of 2024 this year so in that in combination with um, some risk of sentiment and euro strength pretty much out of nowhere um uh, we're, we're seeing this this move and this these, these types of moves are not necessarily sustainable um we do have when you look back and zoom out uh we've had we're at these market highs so um i think i might try multiple times if price does stop me out i'll try again and maybe get some sort of stop hunt above there um of course i definitely will need some uh some euro negative news to kind of help out but i do think when you're looking at the daily and you see this parabolic move to the upside again that i can't see that really you know moving to the upside uh, too far uh, higher so hopefully uh, as we get go into next week um we will see a little bit more downside before we see uh any more upside so those are the trades that i am in this uh week and what's happened so getting into the week ahead and uh this is from trading economics and so the 29th of july in the united states key highlights will include the fed's interest rate decision and non-farm payrolls report other important events will feature jolts, job openings, CB consumer confidence, ISM manufacturing, PMI, 
factory orders, S&P, Shiller Case House Price Index, Pending Home Sales and Employment Cost Index. Globally, Bank of England and the Bank of Japan will provide updates on their monetary policy. That's going to be important. Inflation rates will be released for Germany, Australia and the euro area and Switzerland. Uh, additionally, GDP growth rates will be announced for Germany and the euro area. In China, manufacturing and services PMIs will closely be watched. Manufacturing PMIs will also be published for Canada. So lots going on in the market. So um, this week. So let's get into uh, some of the uh, technicals and see what's happened during the week. So as we um, go on to the uh, dollar index, the equally weighted dollar index, uh, just looking at last week's analysis, um, I think the dollar at the moment is, it looks like it's favoring for a sell and not really just based on uh, the technical side of things, but um when we look at uh, the Fed Watch tool and look at um, you know the probabilities of a rate cut, um, the market is pricing in the hundred percent chance of an ease in September, also in November, and also in December. So any pullbacks should probably likely be a, a more shorting opportunities uh, for the dollar now. Um, looking at uh, the United States and um, we did have some news this week um, it was talking about uh, the uh, the strong GDP reading for the second quarter won't derail a September interest rate cut analysts say and the Federal Reserve is still expected to keep interest rates unchanged next week but the market is now fully priced for a September interest rate cut so um, that's what I just showed you on the FedWatch tool the recent loosening of labor market can Conditions and signs of slower pace, uh, sorry, price growth in uh, price growth still means that there is a strong case for a cut at the following meeting in September, says Stephen Brown, Deputy Chief North America Economist. Lately, the Federal Reserve has indicated it is becoming more concerned about the state of the job market than about inflation failing to fall back in the coming months. And Al Jaffrey, an economist at CIBC Capital Markets, says worries about downside risks in the labour market and sufficient progress on inflation with more shelter disinflation clearly in the pipelines is still going to be enough to get them to start with the easing cycle in September. So um, I think there are reasons to to buy and sell the, um, the dollar. Um, uh, buying really is based on the fact that it's already been priced in. Selling is really uh, understanding that, you know, we've come to maybe some sort of expensive area on the dollar. So I do think the dollar is setting up nicely for uh, some sales. Either we get something there or we get a decent sell. Uh, prices pull back a little bit more up into that zone. And you're basically just using the uh, dollar index, equally weighted dollar index, as uh, some confluence um, to look for short trades on the dollar against other uh, crosses. But let's see what happens uh, this week. Looking at the uh, dollar yen, the dollar yen again, we've had this uh, parabolic move, I say parabolic, but quite a sharp move down uh, beyond again um, any kind of demand zone. And uh, uh, looking at the uh, yen, I guess, from a fundamental perspective. We have, um, uh, where was it now? Where did I have it? Yeah, it was, um, it was here. So it was talking about the yen's stunning revival, you know, is uh, upending global markets, dragging the yuan higher alongside it and hammering assets from Japanese stocks to gold and Bitcoin as investors reassess their leveraged bets. And so it says here, it's effectively a big deleveraging event caused by the short squeeze in the yen, said Carl Rodder, a senior market analyst at Capital.com. It's forcing widespread liquidation across the market. So um, that's really the reason for the massive moves you've seen in the yen. Uh, the yen has really been um, a sell for a very long time, for maybe a, a year or two, over a year or two. And, um, you know, what goes up must come down, right? So um, uh, it's just come down in a, in a bit of spectacular fashion. But I don't really expect it to kind of last too long. I think we may have found some sort of a, 
bottom if if especially if the bank of japan this week does not end up uh, hiking rates or if they don't hike rates as much as the market expects and the forward guidance from Raider is a bit dovish so we could actually even get a dovish hike so that may push the the, the yen a bit weaker now will it do it against the dollar temporarily it could do um but um let's see what happens with the yen just remember that the uh the uh the yen and japan's economy isn't doing great i think they're in a negative at the moment negative growth uh, over the uh the last quarter so uh hiking interest rates at the moment um may exacerbate uh the economy so and cause it to contract a bit more so just be mindful of that so um i do think at the moment although we've seen this price action uh, move to the downside i don't think again it's sustainable unless the bank of japan are extremely hawkish um the dollar swiss dollar swiss again um in a risk-off environment and also as well the risk-off environment was caused by some uh, some negative data of, out of china as well and i think china global growth um had kind of slowed down a little bit or there was indications that it was i think it was their manufacturing or i can't remember exactly what it was but um but yeah uh so risk off in the markets um and we're seeing really the uh, the dollar Swiss kind of set off a little bit, not as much as obviously um, the uh, the yen in terms of uh, appreciation. But I do think that the Swiss franc, once that risk off sentiment uh, starts to subside, which hopefully it does this week, I do think that the, uh, uh, the the Swiss franc is a sell. Now, would I sell or buy the dollar against the Swiss franc? Um, it is possible. It's uh, possible. I do think that the the, the, the dollar is in a better position than the Swiss franc. So this could be uh, interesting if you are looking for any kind of buys. Um, not the best pair to look for uh, for a trade on though. Uh, but ultimately, because the dollar is still quite expensive, right? So when you look at um, the uh, the dollar index, one of the things you're looking to do is is buy the dollar when it's cheap. And so it says, you know, the equally weighted dollar index, it's looking like the... Uh, the um, the dollar is in a supply zone you really want to buy the dollar when it's in a demand zone right and so ultimately um looking at the dollar swiss it doesn't look like it's a great buy in terms of value for the dollar but if you don't you know if you don't take that into account um and you still want to take the trade it does look like a decent technical trade but ultimately that's what i look towards in terms of looking at you know currency's value and uh it doesn't look like the dollar is um any kind of uh you know bargain or discount price so uh i would personally leave that alone uh dollar cad so the canadian dollar cut rates this week um it was widely expected and alongside the risk off uh, sentiment that has happened uh, this week uh, we've seen obviously the dollar benefit over the canadian dollar right and so prices uh, have moved to the upside and if you do want to uh, look for any kind of buy trades, the nearest buy trade is going to be uh, down into this demand zone or if prices make a higher low higher high than a pullback into the higher low before looking at going uh long that's really the uh, uh the play if you're looking for any kind of dollar longs if you're looking for obviously a canadian dollar uh long against the uh, us dollar so basically a short then you're looking at trades right now but i don't know why you would really look for that uh, type of trade um pound dollar so the pound dollar um again a bit of a mixed one not really sold off as much as other currencies uh, this week though could be interesting based on um uh, the bank of england right so the bank of england uh have got uh one sec they have some um some news out and the potential for a rate cut in september right so uh, it says here that the market pricing showed investors lowered expectation to below 50 percent after the release of inflation figures that showed inflation services inflation remains above what the bank of england's most recent forecast anticipated so services inflation is an issue right for the bank of england and if they uh if if, if on the first they definitely confirm that then i think and they hold in September, uh, hold until September, and they don't uh, cut in August. Then I think any pullbacks into that zone to the move, and which should be a really nice move to the upside. So um, the pound looking, still looking strong at the moment. 
Um, but again, it depends on uh, you know whether they do end up uh, cutting rates and whether they don't. If they cut rates in August, uh, then ultimately you might want to look for some decent pullbacks into uh, a supply zone, right? That's what you're really looking for. And in fact, really, the demand zone can redraw it. I would say it's probably there now and there. So that's the top of the... Uh, uh, of price this week so any pullbacks but again not really a pair i'm i'm too interested in i'm looking to buy the pound but it wouldn't be against the uh the dollar people would probably be more against the uh the swiss franc um pound yen so pound yen again a victim of uh any you know risk off sentiment uh the, the yen really kind of making uh new lows so kind of pulling back to i say new lows but new weekly lows i guess so any pullbacks into this level if you want to be a buyer of the uh of the pound right now you'd really want the uh again you'd have to hope for either uh, actually both situations where you've got the uh, bank of england hold rates and the uh, uh, and the bank of japan um hold rates or if they do hike rates it's a dovish hike so uh, any pullbacks into the zone should be nice for a buy but you definitely need uh, those um those scenarios to kind of play out for you the next area to look for any kind of short you're going to buy the yen is going to be either up there or you're going to have to look for prices to make some new lows right like something like that pull back up into a supply zone which would be around there and then look for you know a short right there so uh, those are, those are really the options to to buy or sell the uh the, the pound yen euro dollar so euro dollar i was thinking that this was probably a bit too high of a demand zone buying an expensive area but we did pull back down to nearly touch the uh this demand zone so if you do want to be a buyer of the euro against the dollar um then just a little bit more of a pullback before going long is a decent thing to do if you're looking for any kind of sell trades and buying the uh, dollar against the euro then you're looking at this area right here and looking for a bit more of, of a pullback so um i do think though that the uh um, this is actually a really nice zone to look for a short trade if you are looking for uh buying the uh the dollar over the uh the euro and looking at really the eurozone news um it was saying here that the uh uh, the euro area private sector activity barely grew this month as its top economy unexpectedly slumped so it's talking about the uh, global composite purchase managers index right fell and it says here the eurozone's top two economies have been underperforming uh, in the wider region for some time and the uh, euro slipped and bonds extended a rally after the pmi data as traders added to bets on ecb monetary easing the common currency fell 0.3 percent to an almost two-week level low of 108.26 while yield on the two-year german uh was down five basis points to 2.66 traders now see a 92 percent chance the ecb will deliver two more rate cuts this year up from 88 percent before the release so at the moment it does look like the uh, euro is looking to cut rates twice this year that's what the market expects so you would think that any pullbacks into this zone um uh, should be really more a bit more sells and if you've got really kind of uh, both central banks cutting rates <clears throat> you shouldn't really expect prices to uh, trend too much to either the upside or really the downside it should kind of stay more in this uh, in this kind of auction um, area that's what i would expect but the divergence at the moment between the two isn't there per se uh euro yen Again, the yen really just uh, strengthening uh, this week. Uh, not really a pair that I'd be looking at unless, of course, the uh, the yen do come out as being quite hawkish and start to hike rates, but also um, a hawkish with their hikes. And then you're looking at really just a pullback either into that area there or, again, lower highs, lower lows to be made right there and then a pullback into a supply zone before looking at going short so um uh, I, I still I, I do think that the uh, the yen should have a bit more of an edge based on just interest rate divergences but again it really does depend upon <clears throat> whether the market um 
uh, cares about the um, the the size of the the, uh, the the differential between interest rates, right? So um, if they don't, then and they start to pile into the yen, and then that should really be a bit more of a, of a sell. Euro pound uh, has pulled back a bit. I do want to be a buyer of the pound over the euro, so a bit more upside, uh, and that might look like a decent uh, sell trade. Um, yeah, can't see really the euro fundamentally, uh, politically as well, um, being um, a uh, a buy over the pound. But of course, we do have <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the the Bank of England making a decision as to whether they're going to cut rates or not. If they cut rates, you'll definitely see price, or you'll say definitely, but you're likely to see prices move to the upside, even up towards um, the. Uh, the, the the 85 uh, four area I wouldn't be surprised if prices moved all the way up here as um, the market revalues of course the um, the pounds but then eventually I think you know we should settle down and then looking for more uh, short trades I think on the euro pound Aussie dollar um, Aussie US dollar now I am getting more interested in this and especially if the uh, CPI data for the Australian dollar comes out as being sticky or higher, because if it does, then I do want to be a buyer because the Australian dollar should be one of the last central banks to uh, cut rates <clears throat> with the, um, you know, the Fed looking to cut rates, um, you know, in September, this should be nice. But again, we just need a bit more supporting data for the Australian dollar. So I do think that this, you know, this move to the downside, um, hopefully, um, if you're getting ahead of the news, should be actually a decent buy. But again, you'd need the uh, CPI data to kind of come out in your favor. And I, then after that, and, and also as well, risk sentiment to kind of return to the market. And if you get those two things while you're in the trade, then that is gonna be a very, very nice trade. Uh, gold, uh, you know, pulled back to an area, um, pulled back to both areas that I kind of marked out. But um, again, gold pulling back in a bit of a risk off scenario is a bit of a strange one. But ultimately, you would have to look just look at that as a buying opportunity, right? You can buy the you can buy gold for cheaper. So um, prices did come down into this area here, where we had not only demand but an area of resistance turned support, and it's reacted off there now. Um, again, as we start to get into rate cutting territory, I would really expect gold um, to strengthen against the um, uh, against the dollar. But it doesn't mean it's going to strengthen today or this week. We could even see prices move back down uh, and be a bit more of a bargain for those long term investors. Right. Traders want to buy at bargain prices just because, you know, we want to trade. Um, it's not really about, you know, us and our trades. Right. It's really about whether the you know institutions see this as a, as a bargain or prices down here as a bargain and then you're likely to see prices move to the upside so let's see what happens uh with uh, with gold but i think the path of least resistance should still be to the upside regardless of whether it bounces from here or it moves further down over the next coming weeks but then moves to the upside and it's similar with the S&P, right? S&P, uh, we're just seeing really, if you look at the context of things, just a bit, a bit of a pullback, right? Look at, you know, we've had these shallow pullbacks when you're looking at this, especially even looking at it on a weekly time frame, right? Look at that. On a weekly time frame, you've hardly had any pullbacks. You've had, you know, prices move up, slight retracement, prices move up, slight retracement, prices move up. And then you've got a bit of a retracement, but nothing in, you know, not really anything when you compare it to, you know, the uh, the lows of October 2023, then we've had a similar thing where we've had a little bit of a pullback and he had a bit more of a move higher. So this is to be expected, right? And um, we were talking in the private group about, um, you know, there was a bank saying that, you know, a five to 10% pullback should be on the cards. And so if we're looking at a five to 10% pullback, um, and this was a few, maybe about a week or two ago, if you're looking at where prices are at now, it's really pulled back about 5%. So that makes sense. Obviously, we're seeing uh, a bit of a reaction, um, you know, at this demand zone. Uh, so that makes uh, technical sense as well. But ultimately, 
uh, don't be surprised if you start to see as we head into the election prices start to you know sell off um, as uh, you know traders maybe start to take profit 10% would be somewhere within this uh, demand zone so if we do start to you know sell off I do think ultimately um, as we go into rate cutting territory um, it would basically get everyone out of the market, get everyone bearish. You'll see all the headlines saying the sky has fallen, you know, the S&P, what's happening, et cetera, et cetera. Gets everybody going short and then it just moves to the upside because ultimately when you're looking at the macro side of things and the longer term side of things, if the Federal Reserve are looking to cut, it's nothing but cheap money to buy um, and invest in stocks, the stock market and the indices. So um, either we're looking at, you know, pullback, to one of these levels uh let's see yeah, maybe around here as well nice demand zone um but ultimately if you get that 10 percent retracement um just understand that uh, this is going to be a really nice buying area um especially if the uh, the fed are in you know have started their cutting cycle so um that's what i'm preparing for somewhere around here and then looking for a buy trade now um that's it for this week. So I hope you uh, uh, like the analysis. And uh, if you do comment, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you have a great trading week and take care.